Welcome to Dominion Mode. And today I have with me the Antic Cooler H2O 1250 all in one liquid cooler setup. Well, uh, the whole liquid cooling setup, especially with the all in ones, is quite saturated because uh, what do you, I mean, what can you innovate in and all that? You know, uh, you just have to need a cold plate, a bunch of fans, a radiator, tubes, cooling. But that didn't stop Antec from innovating. I mean, if you look at this uh, cooler, just from the box itself, you can see that it is different. What's the difference that we'll come on to it later? First of all, you can see that the box is quite nicely packed and it, you know, it uh, is compatible with the LG A775, 1150, 1155, 1156 and 2011 and 1306 and 30, 30, socket. Which means you can use it with almost all the processors ranging from the Pentium series to the Haswell, Haswell Refresh, Haswell Enthusiast and God knows what more even if they are based on the same socket. And on the AMD, AM2, AM2+, plus, AM3, AM3+, plus, FM1, FM2. The that covers are from the Athlon series, Phenom series, the FX series, and even the APUs. You know, so it's quite universal. So first thing goes to Antec, it's quite universal, it's quite uh, friendly. You, it comes with a installation manual, a warranty card, that's this is styrofoam, let's see it over there, and these as well. The unit comes with uh, all you know the nuts and screws and bolts that you would be requiring. One of the very good things that I liked about it that it comes with a uh, you know a universal retention plate as well as a universal back plate. Well, this is quite cool because you know you don't have to deal with a lot of stuff. Like unlike other coolers where you have to have a separate retention ring for Intel and a separate retention ring for AMD and say and you know respect and similarly a, a corresponding back plate. This one comes with a universal back plate. The center one is for AMD, the sides are for Intel. If you have an AMD processor, you don't need to use this because the stock back plate does work with this one. That's quite cool. And hassle free installation, quite good. This is the universal retention ring. You just, you know, you can slide these uh, edges up and down and uh, they will accordingly fit for the Intel and the AMD so you don't have to actually work you know you can just slide them like this and you can just put them in the required configuration nuts, bowls, stickies etc well, that's quite common nowadays so you will have to have them ok ah uh, yeah the driver CD it comes with a grid software for controlling you know the RBG uh, light the RPM of the fan the monitoring the temperature of the coolant all those cool stuff and so that's it, you can download from the website even. Alright, now this is a quite heavy unit. The 1250, pretty much like the 650, 950, belongs to the same series, but this one is a bit heavy. So let me be very straightforward. It's quite heavy, so you need to find something that can hold that up. Alright, so by looking at the unit itself, it is quite clear that it's different. It has two built in fans which are powered by two separate pumps. Now this is quite interesting because conventionally liquid cooling setups have a pump built into the cold plate. But this one actually comes with two pumps, not one. Then they are attached to fans which are not removable, which are in turn attached to the radiator itself. So this whole thing is a rigid, non-customizable unit. Well, this is quite good because you have two pumps, so obviously there is a potential uh, for, you know, improved performance but also there is redundancy I and mean, what happens is I hate about uh, this thing about liquid coolers that if one thing fails the whole unit fails like if your pump fails the fan won't you know keep spinning and that won't actually do any good and you will have a spike in your temperature and you might damage your processor but in this case if one of the pump fails obviously the fan corresponding to the pump will also fail but the second pump will keep functioning this means you will at least have some temperature control and will not be having a burnt chip. Which is quite good, so kudos to the anti taking care of that. Uh, the radiator is a 240mm one, obviously it was a 240mm pump, it's, so the pin density is quite high. So obviously there should be good airflow. You can mount extra fans on top and make it a push-pull configuration by, by default it comes in a you know push configuration it takes the air from inside of your 
cabinet. So make sure you have a good airflow inside. Then uh, tubing. Oh my goodness, it's quite heavy. You can hear by the the sound itself is quite heavy. The tubing is quite flexible, quite nice, quite rigid material, and uh, they are enforced at the edges. The cold plate comes with a thermal paste pre-applied, so that's quite good. You can use your own brand also, but by default they are providing you with some thermal paste. And oh gosh, this is actually the bad part about this cooler that I really didn't like. But uh, okay, this comes with a lot of wires, and they all come out of the cold plate. The first one is the uh, you know power power cable. It will go in the system fan of your motherboard. This one is the USB header, which will go into the USB port because through this the grid software interact with the cooler and control of your fan and coolant temperature, etc., etc. These Y-shaped connector, which come out actually, are for additional fans. I mean, you can connect additional fans to these, and then you can mount them on top of this cooler and then put it in a push-pull configuration as we have discussed earlier. So this cover up almost everything for the cooler. Now uh, I would uh, move on uh, to the grid software. I would just give you a peek of how it works. And then maybe we'll uh, move on to the test configuration and show you how the Antec Cooler 1250-240mm all-in-one CPU liquid cooler actually performs. Alright. In a test pin setup, the Antec Cooler H20-1250 was configured with an Intel i5-4670K processor which was overclocked to 4.3 GHz. It was crunching numbers on Prime 95 for around 30 minutes and along with that, I had run Unigen Heaven 4.0 just to emulate real life conditions because the cooler actually takes air from inside of your cabinet. So, the results were quite impressive. It performed better than most of the other coolers that are priced around or way over its price. At just around $100, this cooler with its stock fans, because I tried to swap the fans with high performance fans, but it wasn't possible because the power to the pumps actually run directly through the fans. So that was impossible. Obviously, customizability issues and compatibility issues are there, but at $100 or 9000 rupees in India, the Antec Cooler H20 1250 is meant for a person who likes performance, can tolerate noise, obviously it is a bit noisy, and is an overclocker or a gamer or lives in a country that is a bit hot like India. So you should buy this, it's priced reasonably, it comes, comes with blinks like the RGB LED, customizability through the software, grid software is quite uh, easy to configure, 3 years warranty, reasonable price. So, from my side, Antec Cooler H20 1250 deserves a big thumbs up. And if you like my video, don't forget to subscribe, do hit the like button, do share my videos. If you disliked it, don't hesitate to hit the dislike button. Thank you for watching. Until the next time, bye bye and take care.